Hi everybody, thanks for joining today. My name's Marissa, and today we're gonna learn a little bit about trees. So as I'm sure you know, trees are fantastic. They do a lot for us, for animals, and for the environment. They take in carbon dioxide, which is the air we breathe out, and help to give us clean oxygen. And they also provide a lot of benefits for animals by giving them food and shelter. So today we are gonna read A Log's Life by Wendy Pfeiffer. And I'm gonna need all of your help to identify all the different animals that call this tree home. Deep in a forest grate, oak tree stands. A family of squirrels lives in a hole in its trunk. A porcupine chews on its branches. A colony of carpenter ants nests under the outer bark. A woodpecker pecks at the rough bark, searching for insects. He spears one, devours it, and hunts for more. Wood boring beetles burrow under the bark, chewing wood and leaving tunnels. Water and air seep into the tunnels. Toadstools and other fungi, such as mildew, molds, and mushrooms, sprout in these damp places. Slugs and snails crawl up the tree trunk into the tunnels and eat the fungi. One stormy day, a strong wind whips through the forest. The old oak bends with every gust. Rain pelts its branches, wind tosses its leaves through the air, lightning flashes and sizzles down its trunk. A thunderous crack startles the porcupine sleeping nearby. The tall oak begins to topple. Squirrels feel the trembling and scramble out of their hole. One strong gust of blistery wind tears the great oak's roots from the ground. The tree crashes down, shaking the forest floor. Branches break, limbs splinter, and leaves scatter. What do you think will happen now? Now, the tree is a giant log. Lying down here on the forest floor. Soon, the storm stops and the sun comes out. An umbrella of leaves and tangled branches block the sunshine from the forest floor. The porcupine comes out of its den, squirrels scamper to see the old hole that was once their home. Under the log, ants rush about, carrying bundles of babies. A spider crawls through the cracks and crevices, searching for a dry spot to place her egg sack. See right here, this little white part, it's her egg sack. Millipedes settle between the log and the wet ground. For now, they're safe from the spider. Termites soon discover the fallen log and move in. They not only eat the rotting wood, they lay their eggs there too. For three or four years through the hot, cold, wet, and dry seasons, ants, beetles, fungi, slugs, snails, spiders, millipedes, and termites live in the log. How many of those can you see here? One winter, the porcupine's hollow log collapses. He moves into the oak log too. See him here sleeping. In the spring, chick beetles snap and click their bodies and flip high in the air before settling in the log. Salamanders, frightened by the noise and sudden movement, start under the log for safety and stay. There's a salamander. In the summer, pill bugs and slugs crawl inside the cool, moist log to keep from drying out. Pill bugs eat dead leaves. Salamanders eat the pill bugs. Slugs slip out at night and eat almost anything. The old log provides food and shelter for the millipedes. They eat decaying plants and trees, but spiders eat the millipedes. Several more years of hot, cold, wet, and dry seasons pass. Time, weather, and the chewing, pecking, boring, and tunneling of many animals and insects make the inside of the log spongy. The outer bark becomes soft and damp, and gradually it falls off to the ground. Wood boring insects have no wood to bore. They find another log. The woodpecker hunts for other trees to peck. Spiders spin their webs in drier spots and the porcupine moves to a more solid log. Everybody's moving out. 
Slowly, a lush green blanket of moss carpets the rotting log. Its thick roots break down the wood. Over the next few years, the log crumbles. What's left looks just like dirt. It feels like dirt. It smells like dirt. It is dirt. Earthworms move in. They turn the soil over just as a shovel does. They burrow down and break up the soil just as a rake does. In about 10 years, the rotting log has become a mound of rich black earth. One autumn day, an acorn falls from a nearby oak tree. A squirrel buries it in the rich soil. What do you think happens next? A seedling oak sprouts and grows and grows until... One day, deep in the forest, another great oak tree stands. Squirrels move in, so do carpenter ants, beetles, and woodpeckers. The ants again build nests, the beetles burrow, the woodpeckers peck. For years, life goes on in the oak tree. Then one night, the wind whistles through the trees, the old oak tree bends and shakes, it crashes to the forest floor and becomes another giant log. The end. Thanks for listening, everybody. Join me next because we are gonna go on a hike to Wachusett Mountain and check out some of the trees there and see what we can find. Hey everyone, my name is Marissa and we are here at Wachusett Mountain and we're gonna go on a virtual hike today. So come join me and Yahtzee and see what we find. When you're out hiking in the woods, you wanna find a trail and stick to it. So the trail that we're following today is has all of these yellow markers. So as you can see, we're gonna walk right by this tree and head towards this other one up here with this other yellow marker. So when you're out hiking in the woods, I like to always take a page out of Yahtzee's book and use my nose to explore all the scents around me. Hey everyone, so I found something really neat over here on this rock. If you come in a little closer, you'll see that it's really green and it actually feels very soft. Anyone know, think they know what this is? You said moss. You are correct. So we have come across this awesome little mountain stream from all the snow that's melting. And yet he's in here, cooling off, taking a drink. Another interesting find here on this tree. See all this flaky green stuff here? This is a type of organism called lichen. And lichen is actually two organisms that live together in a symbiotic relationship. It's a fungus and an algae together make up the lichen. And you'll always see it growing on trees or rocks. It can grow most anywhere in the world. So Yahtzee came upon this really cool tree over here. If you look closely, it looks like it has all these empty holes and cavities. Can you think of anybody who might like to live here? Right, so we've made it to Balance Rock. This is one of my favorite spots on the trail. These rocks are super, super tall. How do you think they got stacked on top of each other like that? All right, everybody. I hope you were paying attention because here comes the quiz. See these two different patches of green? Which one is lichen and which one is moss? If you said the light green one here was lichen, you are correct. And the green fuzzy one up here is moss. All right, so here we have some other really cool finds. If you look closely, you'll see this light green stuff again, which is called lichen. And then all of this little white stuff is a type of fungus in the turkey tail family. We're gonna look really close. Look how cool that is. All the different shapes. Yeah, see, what do you think? So if you look down here, I see a bunch of these little nuts. Does anybody know what they're called? Acorns, right? So it looks like somebody, maybe a squirrel or a chipmunk, stopped down for a little snack. You can see half of them are eaten, and we have just the tops left over for some of them. And something really interesting you can do when you find the top of an acorn is whistle. 
tucked into the side of this little tree here, right at the base of the trunk, I have found some ferns. And ferns are really interesting because instead of growing from a seed, like most plants, ferns actually reproduce from creating tiny little spores. See these little brown dots? They will eventually fall off and then a new fern will grow right below. We just came across this really cool find on our path. What do you think happened to this poor tree? Let's go get a closer look. What do you think made all of these holes in the tree? Can you think of an animal, maybe a bird, who likes to peck the tree to search for its next meal? So you can see this giant mud puddle here without realizing how deep it was. I took a nice step in it and uh, check out my shoe and check out my dog. If you look closely through the brush, you can see that there's a little pond over here. If you listen closely, you can listen to the calls of an animal called the wood frog. Now wood frogs are amphibians. So that means they live part of their life in the water and part of it on land. This sound means spring is definitely here. Yetzi's on the trail of something. I don't know what it is. Yetzi, what do you smell? What do you think could live in these rocks? So we've come across these little saplings here, just poking out of the brush. <laughs> these are evergreen trees, which means they do not lose their leaves or needles when it gets cold outside. We have all these big fallen down logs and I just rolled over this big one here. So let's see what we can find. Now look closely everybody. As you can see, this log is breaking down. It's decomposing. It can break it up into these little teeny tiny pieces. And that's because there are all these wonderful creatures that live under a log that feed off of it and break it down. Now I found something really interesting. Does everybody see this little spot of orange here? This is one of my favorite critters. Do you know what kind of animal this is? Take a look at its color, its shape, and its pattern and see if you can figure it out. So if you said this was a red eft, you are correct. This is actually the juvenile stage of an eastern newt. So he's kind of like a teenager. He's not fully grown yet. He will go through metamorphosis one more time to become an adult. And when they are juveniles, they live mainly on land. So he's in the forest habitat right now, as you can see. But when he gets older, he will migrate and find a nice pool to live in. And amphibians, like our friend here, love to hang out in what's called a vernal pool, which will dry up in the summer, which means no fish or other predators can live there. And he's actually so brightly colored because that also acts as a warning for those predators to stay away tells them that he does not taste very good. Now it's very important that every time you roll a log to see what's underneath, you put it back like you found it. So I'm gonna put my friend the red eft back here, right in his little spot where I found him, nestled nice and safely. I'm gonna gently roll the log back down. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Don't forget to get outside, hug a tree, and see what you can find.